here we go. Very good. Well, uh, again, a nice toasty uh, summer afternoon to everybody. <laughs> again, registration boosters. Cheryl is our great uh, PowerPoint presenter, and uh, you see some serious boost going on. And again, for us in Kansas, seeing something fiery is just not fun at all because we see that when we walk outside. So. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you're viewing this video maybe in the wintertime when it's cool, and that sounds good. But uh, we're here to talk about ways to boost registrations, and that certainly is uh, a goal we all have. And kind of review some of these are things that perhaps you, you don't think of as boosters, but we want to make sure that you've got those included in your palette. Uh, most of these are things you can enable uh, right within your current package. There are a couple of optional modules that you may want to think about. So let's just get right to it here. So um, we're going to talk about proxy registration. And again, uh, some options and, and ways to uh, make that work for you. Uh, and a new feature, this multi-proxy registration. If you've been signing up and watching the uh, webinars as far as the new features webinar, you will see that those uh, those are uh, that's something that was just added in the last uh, build in Ace Web. Uh, the two the two uh, uh, modules, a uh, partner enrollment packaging and course packaging in Bogo, are optional modules related courses there in the middle. Uh, again, that's part of the the base system, and so if you're not doing that. Uh, we'd certainly encourage you to do that. So, um, all right, let's kind of get to it. Hopefully this will be a brief one and you get back to sitting in front of the air conditioner. So, um, again, just a shout out. I know we've got pros that are watching this. If you've got some other things that you're doing that you can think of that you call registration boosters, and again, related to using one of the features of AceWeb or Student Manager, Drop them in the chat box, and we should have time at the end to maybe bring those up and and make sure other users can benefit from the experience you've got. So proxy registration, and this has to do with AceWeb, your, your AceWeb, of course. And basically, it's the idea that on the web, you can have other people enroll in a class. And again, uh, where, you, where you get that is that and you should be now looking at my screen. Uh, we're going to jump over to the AceWeb sandbox. But the idea is that if I'm enrolling in a program or I have a program that I'd like to enroll in, um, one of the things that you will want to do is, again, enroll, add the Enroll Somebody Else link. And again, this can be turned on and off at the individual setting at your institution. And so again, if you have, if 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 it's been shut off at your place, we would incur. Uh, there may have been a reason why you did that at one time or another. Uh, would sure like to revisit that with you to uh, uh, turn that on. Uh, one of the things I will note is that for some users, uh, there were people who were doing. If you were doing enroll somebody else, it would be possible for people to get confused and try to enroll themselves in the class as opposed to, say, a child or a partner. Uh, we've added some new phrasing to the logon routine that I think will address that. So again, uh, if you don't have the enroll somebody else option showing on your AceWeb, uh, you certainly, I would think, would want to, uh, would want to get on that. So. So when you pick enroll somebody else, and again, the, the rule on enrolling a proxy is that you, if, if I'm Chuck and I want to enroll my spouse, Barbara, I need to log on first. So you always have the person who is doing the registering log on first. When they click proxy registration, then it will show them who are the people that you have already enrolled or have previously enrolled or uh, the email address of a different person, or if it's a first time they've ever done any proxy enrollments, it would ask them for the email address of the person who they want to enroll. Um, so again, uh, the idea is that that enroll somebody else button appears. 
So when they do that, like I said, it'll show you people who they have enrolled before or people who they are related to in the name contacts from the name record within Student Manager. Uh, so again, it has uh, a log on users name group or previously registered. So what is, what is the, the name group? Well, on the name record, there is a screen, uh, and let me roll to that here. Let's abandon this and pull up a name. On the name record, there is a grouping uh, checkbox. And again, if we're gonna go look at Mr. Havlicek here, we'll see he's got people grouped together. And so there are several people, I have an extended family there. Uh, there are several people who he has connected with as part of my personal group. Typically this would be uh, for community ed or general continuing ed, it might be family members or it could be associates if there's a bridge group. And But anyway, you as a staff member are able to add people to the name grouping of an individual in your database. Students online, when you log into your account on ACEWeb, they can add, the student can add other people to their name group or affinity group or, or buddy group. So anyway, so it's either names that are in this group or names that have been enrolled uh, previously uh, would be names that show up when you get this, select someone you have previously enrolled. Okay, so when I log in and click enroll somebody else, I see those other people, or I could write in the name of a, an email address of somebody new. Um, if that person's email is not in the database, they'll be able to create an account for that other person. And again, the name and address is by default of the user, who me, who's logged in, will be filled in on that record and the student enrolling who's doing the proxying gets to fill out the first name, last name and update the address if that is not uh, somebody who is in their household. Okay, it is also possible to assign a proxy to a registration in student manager with the assign proxy button. And this is basically a way for you as a staff member to do a uh, after the fact uh, name grouping option. So if, if you've got somebody whom I know, you say, I know this person is um, a part of the group for Havlicek, uh, we'll, we're gonna add Chuck Havlicek as the proxy uh, manager, if you would, or the connection for this particular person's registration. So you click on the assigned proxy, it'll bring up the name lookup in manager, you assign the proxy person, and it'll now display where the word was assigned proxy or the button, it now says registered by. So as a staff member, you can build a connection from uh, a registration to an existing student. And again, if you've got parents registering students, uh, and they registered the student kind of by themselves and didn't do proxy reg. Uh, they, they just created a student record and used their own email for that student. You can create a proxy connection between the student to the parent. So that again, you have the ability to control that and do some managing of that uh, from student manager. Sharon, I'm gonna ask if there's questions, have we got any? You do have uh, a question. Yeah. Um, somebody wants to know the grouping checkbox at their organization is grayed out in manager. So how can they get that set up? Uh, I'm not sure that, uh, let's, let's take a look here. Let's take a look to see if there is a setting for that. Uh, and we get Matthew on that name grouping, group, group, group. Create, oh, yes, it is. Okay, uh, I guess I hadn't realized I need my bad on that. On the, if you're looking at my screen now, under the name preferences, there is a system level 
uh, box that enables or disables name grouping, which means when a, when the keeper of the flame turns that on, it will be on for everybody. So yes, um, uh, you do have to go into system preferences on the name record and enable that. And uh, thank you for checking that, Lorelei, because you're right. If you don't have that on, it is going to be grayed out. So, all right, good question. Any others right now, Sharon? Nope, looks good. All right. Um, now, here's one of the brand new things with the latest version of Student Manager uh, in the proxy mode. And let's kind of back up one. When you're doing proxy registration, typically, well, typically on the web anyway, with proxy registration, the person who is the proxy, or if you would, the person who is actually managing the registration pays for the tab. So they are the one who is paying for the registration of all of those proxies that they're enrolling. If I'm gonna sign up Sharon for this class on, uh, on uh, ancient medieval texts, uh, I better be paying for that. Sharon may not be as excited about that topic as I am. If I'm gonna invite her along, I'm gonna pay for her bill. So the idea is that in the registration refunds, uh, with Refund Wizard, we've always had it uh, as a way to easily move money back and forth uh, to escrow or refund to the student, uh, which by default we figured was the payer. Uh, now there is an op, well, the payer, I guess it would refund to me as a payer in either case. But what's now an option with the Refund Wizard is that you can refund to the proxy's escrow account. So in other words, rather than giving a refund to Chuck Havlicek who paid for Sharon's class, uh, Sharon says, hey, I appreciate being invited, but I really don't wanna go to this medieval text one, so you can cancel me out. So I'm saying, all right, we're gonna do a refund. I need a refund, a cancel refund Sharon's registration. But rather than refunding the money to me, who paid for it in the first place, I would say, hey, I might invite, well, I'm going to invite Susan to this class. Maybe she'll go with me. And so I said, put it in escrow, and I might use that for another purchase. But it goes into my escrow rather than being refunded directly to me. So again, that is a nice option that, again, reduces the potential for having, yeah, or it, it it makes it even more advantageous to make sure you use the proxy reg. So, okay, brand new feature in the last version here, multi-proxy registration. And you see the note there, you do need to get your ACE web updated and you probably will need to get with your tech and get a couple of updated templates. But the difference between multi-proxy and quote regular proxy is that you can enroll multiple people at the same time. So when you get presented the list of names that are in your grouping, either from past registration history or they're in my name grouping, I can select multiple names. So if I have a bridge group and I know that everybody in my bridge group is wanna to go to medieval text class, uh, and I, my apologies to the medieval, um, uh, you know, academics out there. That's a perfectly good topic. I'm just picking on a given topic. So, uh, but I can enroll multiple people in one pass and have all of those people added to that class that I'm going to pay for at one time. Uh, so again, when I select that, it'll show enrolling two users in this class I get to pick the registration fee. I get to pick the optional fees. And again, those fees will be assigned to all of the registrations that I pick. So if I'm buying a book for, uh, for them, I'll be buying two books, one for Stein and one for Lindsay. Now, uh, there is another, there's yet another angle to the multi-proxy that for business to business, if you're doing corporate training or you doing, you have professional programs where you have companies sending people or people coming from companies to uh, the programs, you can allow a feature called firm work or work contacts. And what this does is if I am with ASOR Systems, which I still am as of last note, 
um, it will show all of the other people who are from ASOR systems. They are connected through the firm, uh, the firm connection. And I would be able to enroll uh, any or all of these people in a given class. Now, again, in order to do that, there is a allow to proxy register firm on the name record of the student. So let's kind of roll over to that here now. So let's go over to the name record here. So under the demographics section, there is a preference here or a setting, I should say, allowed to proxy register firm on ACEWEB. And so again, you know, according to this demo database, if I were to log in uh, to do a proxy reg, I will not be able to see other people who are connected to ACEWARE. Uh, if I turn that on, uh, if a staff member turns that on, and again, this is something staff have to do through student manager. A student who is creating an account in ACEWEB cannot independently say, hey, I'm in charge of this ACEWARE group give me the ability to look and see who else is in ACEWARE. So again, this is a controlled feature. Uh, what you could do is offer this to training directors, uh, department heads and say, hey, we now have the ability to allow you to enroll multiple people from your company in any class in a much smoother, quicker, faster way. Would you like that? Who, who from your company would you like to offer that serve or that to permission to. So this is basically a, a permission based uh, feature and you would want to check with your, you would want to check with your, um, uh, uh, your clients to see if this is a feature that you would want to allow. Now I'm going to go ahead and close that. I'm going to jump to preferences and see if multi proxy option is a preference. It looks like that is on multi-proxy. I believe that is on by default. So that feature, if you're, uh, check me out uh, folks, look up your student manager name record and verify that that's available uh, on your, uh, just, you know, your regular example here. So, all right. So the idea, multiple firm members can be enrolled in the same class. <clears throat> and again, so, uh, with a multi-proxy on a person who is logged in can either say, just show my personal contacts or show the contacts uh, that are connected through the company that, I'm, that I am connected to. Uh, here's some notes. Number one, if you do select multiple people to enroll in a class, supplemental data pages are not supported uh, for more than one uh, proxy at a time. If you only have one proxy selected, it will support a supplemental data capture. If multiple proxies workshops are supported, to, so you could put them into a workshop course. However, all of the proxies, all of the people that you're, or this person's enrolling, will be enrolled in the same workshop. Now, a couple of notes about uh, the multi-proxy. Number one is that um, you can enable or disable multi-proxy at the course level. So if you go to a course and go to ACEWEB Info, you can offer, you can set up a multi-partner or none for proxy type. So I think none would actually, I don't know if we have Cheryl on, probably not. I think that this course would then not have the proxy option listed. By default, if it's blank, if you just leave it as the default, uh, it, would, um, it would show the proxy based on uh, your setting in ACEWEB. So again, you can enable multi-proxy on a course by course basis. By default, I believe you can have it enabled for all of your courses. So you don't have to go through and, and uh, label individual courses. Point of that is again, you still have control if there's some reason you're not sure that multi-proxy is the right way to go. Okay, uh, new module. 
uh, partner enrollment package. And you see the toot, 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 toot. Well, um, one of the dilemmas that uh, folks have in the business is that you've been around at your institution, hopefully for a long, long time, and people are familiar with seeing your programs. And sometimes it's like familiarity breeds, meh, meh, meh. Okay, big deal. You're here, you're there. And so what you're looking for is some reason to really get out there and toot your horn. Well, partner enrollment package is a tool that you can add on that allows you to facilitate double enrollments in your classes. You get two for the price of one, not quite. You get two for a discounted price. And the beauty of it is that you don't have to use the term partner. You could use bring a buddy, find a friend, call a colleague, pick a partner, ask an associate. The point is you're able to kind of pick a marketing program or message or a hook, you know, I always talk about a marketing hook, you can pick the marketing hook that you think would work for your programs. How does it work? Well, once you set up a course as a uh, partner enrollment packaging, what you do is you first of all identify what is the keyword that you're going to use when you are setting up the partner system. And let me jump to manager because this basically is where we go to. And again, back into preferences. So the idea is for partner enrollment program. Oh, partner, partner, partner. Where's my partner? And now I'm trying to think. Sharon, I was thinking that that was... And I may not have partner enrollment program on my demo. Let me just take a quick check. Manager optional modules. I don't have partner enrollment packaging, so I'm not seeing it. But there is basically in preferences, my bad on that, uh, there'd be in preferences a setting where you could say, type in the keyword that you want to use as the trigger word, if you would, to enable the partner package uh, system to go into place. Uh, so again, uh, what you do is that if, if we're using partner in the keyword in this particular uh, uh, demo here, when you have a, you say, I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna choose the couple fee, bring a partner. And, it, and that keyword doesn't have to be the first letter of, of the first word of the fee descriptor. It could be the last word. It just needs to be in that particular description. So when you pick a partner, then uh, the select a partner uh, button is lit up. Nothing else is lit up. So in other words, they have to find a partner if they want to check out using the couple's fee. And again, I'm hitting this again. You can change the terminology. Instead of partner, you can use, again, friend, colleague, buddy, associate, uh, you know, um, uh, number two, whatever you might want to call it, as long as you use that phrasing in the, in the description. So they select the partner. And then basically, it's similar to uh, escrow or, or, or proxy. Uh, they can either look at somebody who they've enrolled previously uh, or through the name group or through a prior enrollment or enter a new email. Once they select the partner, it will show uh, the person who is doing the, the proxy or, which is me, the fee is assessed to my registration. The partner is a is a freebie because I'm I'm bringing the partner Susan and I I'm back to Susan again we're going to dance together. Uh, now you also have this same feature if you're doing registrations over the phone or in person or walk in or by mail uh, with student manager, so that when you uh, when you assign a registration and choose the partner fee there will be a link on the registration to assign a partner, which then jumps you to the name find. Similar to, again, proxy, uh, signing a proxy or adding a registration into a, into a class. 
Um, again, the partner enrollment packaging, and I think it's around 1600 bucks. Uh, but that is, uh, that is um, I think, a great way to try to get doubles up. And again, you don't have to use the same term semester after semester. You could use bring a buddy one semester and for the next semester, change the keywords to partner and pick a partner on the next semester. So again, you can kind of stay fresh with marketing plans to keep that going. Okay, related courses. Uh, this is part of the base system and you can uh, assign those. Uh, Sharon, I'm gonna have you do a show of hands. Uh, folks, raise your hand if you are assigning related courses to uh, when you're building out a course catalog descriptor. How many, how many out there Watching raise their hands? Watching 10%, 20, 30, yep. 40. Yep. I don't see that. Anybody. This is going to be new to folks. Oh, wow. Like. Well, new where they just haven't used it. And so the idea is that you can encourage students to enroll in these related courses. I like soup. Well, you might also like stews or broths or purees. And you want to present those courses to them to try to get them to sign up. So again, so if I pick a course uh, uh the click on that link it will show them all of the courses that are related to this other course where do you set those up uh when you're building a catalog description for a course under the prerequisite area is a section called related classes and that's where you would um you would put in the catalog codes of all of the classes that you think they would be interested in. So again, this idea, well, how do I decide what's related? Again, note, this is not like, I guess, Amazon, where they say people who bought X also bought. You as a marketer, genius that you are, you as the marketer are the one who decides, well, I think if they took a ACEWARE training course, I'm going to show every other ACEWARE related training course, marketing or uh, using the report writer, uh, how to do credit cards in ACEWARE, building out ACE web pages, blob, all of those ACEWARE related courses, I'm going to add as related so that when they, uh, when they go to register for a class, uh, they're gonna see these related courses. And let's, let's roll to, uh ace web okay so if we go to the ace web demo uh and i think sharon i don't know if you mentioned it in this session but the idea that if you haven't been in ace web's uh sandbox before uh go to the aceware homepage, and we're going to take you back there right now aceware homepage, demos ace web sandbox and in there you're going to see examples and these are all of, all of these are examples of things you can do with ACE Web. And there's a few that are optional modules, they're add-on uh, upcharges, but the bulk of them are integrated into the current system. <clears throat> so again, what were we talking about? We were talking about related courses, uh, related courses. So the idea is I wanna do Extend Student Manager with AceWeb, I click on it, and there is a link, Related Courses. So I can say, you may also be interested in these courses, and, and when the student clicks on that, it'll tell you if there are courses that are actually uh, booked <clears throat> right now in that area. And of course, thanks to Cheryl and our good demo, we have we have something in each one of those areas here. But that is what the related courses option is. Uh, and again, uh, if you've got uh, areas of study, really there's no harm, no foul. And, and I'll show you how easy it is. Let's uh, okay with this, look up a course, mastering student manager, go to the catalog code description. So this is mastering student manager. When you go to prerequisites, those are all the related courses, ACEWARE 101, 102, 105, 210, so that you as the program manager, marketer, guide, leader, 
can assign as many related courses in that group uh, as you want. And again, it'll it'll show those uh, to the student when they're when they pick a particular class. Questions? I think we're doing good so far. You're doing good so far. Course packaging. Here is another optional module. I think a lot of you. This is one of our most popular modules. Again, I think the sixteen hundred dollar ish uh, module. Uh, but basically allows you to put together multiple registrations into a package and it allow a student to make one purchase. In other words, I want to buy the bundle and I get all three of these classes in one step. And generally you as the program offerer will offer a little bit of a discount if they take all three. You know, it's the bulk, you know, it's a kind of a baker's dozen-ish um, kind of model. <clears throat> so two types of packaging. Uh, and again, the way course packages are built is that there's a parent course that then links to child courses. Uh, a couple of different types. Package type one is where the parent course actually exists uh, so that you can have uh, child courses in there, but you would have a fee of zero because you're going to be paying for that at the parent course level. Um, there is a registration record of the student in this parent course, <clears throat> and all fees are assessed and all payments made to the parent course registration. And we'll talk about the application of these in a bit. Package number two um, is no fees are set up on the parent course, you would set up a package rate on each child course. And those would be assessed when enrolling individuals in the package. So that each of the child courses will have a fee, the discounted uh, package or bundle rate on that registration. And there is no registration record on the parent course. So uh, package type one. So this is a total price for the package. So it says this is a three course package. Total cost for the package is $525. <clears throat> and again, uh, there isn't any, uh, you know, note you save X dollars uh, over buying individual courses. If you're gonna do that, you probably would wanna put that in the description of the type one package. Um, so that, when a student is enrolled in the class, this is an example of a course history then for someone enrolling in the student manager certificate. Uh, they're enrolled in the master mother, if you would, certificate course. The fees are on that certificate. And then they are also enrolled in the three child classes, but there are no fees assessed on those child classes. The only exception about child level fees is that if there were mandatory fees, on a given class, uh, it would be assigned to that particular child class. Um, type two, the second type of, of package is where basically you would create a bundler, which is the mother course is kind of the bundler, and then you would assign to that mother course any number of classes that you're going to kind of link together and you're gonna present a uh, re reduced fee for the courses if they buy them as part of the package. <clears throat> so uh, again, the packaging type two is kind of a Trojan horse course uh, in that there are no enrollments in the mother course, just the child courses. So how do you do that? Uh, oh, well, going back. So this is an example of enrolling in a type two package. Uh, they just have enrollments in each of those uh, those three child classes at that discounted fee. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's let's go back and take a look at the way it actually works in Manager, and let's find a package course. So here is a package type that is package type one, and the way you enable that is when you have the module is that you go into the type and you pick package one or package two. When you pick the package, then at package one, you would set up the registration fee 
uh, at the package mother course level. Uh, on the individual courses, you'd go over to the package course button and just add courses to make up the package. Um, so again, we're going to right mouse click and go to this as one of the child courses in the package. And so what you would do is you'd set up a fee in the course that is a package rate and for type one, it'd be zero. And you'd wanna typically hide that from the web because you don't wanna let a student just pick a zero rate if they're not taking this as part of the package. Uh, okay, so that is the uh, package type one. Package type two is the one where package two, you go into the package courses and there is a fee set up uh, for the package uh, at the package rate on that individual class. <clears throat> so had a thought on that. Okay, going back to uh, package number one now, let's find the certificate. I think that's what we called it. Um, one of the benefits of having a package for courses that are, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to health courses, phlebotomy uh, training or phlebotomy certificate or a, a CNA certificate, uh, where typically if you're going to get the program, you have to take a certain set of classes, courses one through five, whatever. The other advantage of that is that a lot of times those fees might be a lot more expensive. So maybe let's say we, uh, I don't know that I've got the flip, I've got the CNA. I do have a CNA one here. Here's one that I picked up. Here's another model of a package one. So this fee, oh, I don't have to set registration fee. It could be $1,495, okay? So it's a, it's a, your fee is typically more expensive. Why would be the benefit of using having all the fees tied to the mother certificate versus individual courses? If you were to allow students to do a billing program, then all of your fees are dropped into this one main course. The student only has one set of registration, a uh, one registration that all of the bills are tied to, and you as a manager aren't having to split, you know, five separate. Uh, deposit payments to five different courses that are part of a bundle. Uh, if you made it a package type one, you can manage all of your fees. So let's go ahead and add an, an optional fee. Uh, there could be a laboratory fee of X amount, $50. Uh, you could have some books. Uh, maybe you've got book fees that uh, you add to this particular course that our add-on optional fees again. So you basically can add optional fees and add-ons, test fees, exam fees onto this one mother course. And that kind of gives you a place to uh, have everything kind of organized in the same place. Sharon, any other thoughts on packaging that you can think of? Not a question about packaging, but we'll come back to a question about proxy okay. reg. Okay, all right. Uh, all right, so let's move on to uh, the child courses, course packaging. We talked about a couple questions. Can I still allow enrollments in child classes? And of course, absolutely. That's the beauty of the course packaging is that you can still have a course that is, uh, let's student manager. So you could have a package rate uh, let's see, extend student manager with ACE. Where's one of my packages? Uh, you can have a you can have a package rate for a class and still have it available for standalone one-on-one -on -one registration. So you're you're not limited by anything like that. Uh, so here's back to that. What types of programs best fit which packages? And again, the idea of the more complicated one the ones that might be more academic level, the ones with package level add-on fees we talked, ones that might be higher dollar, more expensive ones where the student might want to uh, ask for a payment plan. Uh, it just simplifies the management of that 
uh, that program. Uh, and then package two, you really can kind of make uh, lots of different belated courses. Any set of, uh, say, three or more courses that you can say, well, if I were to add together HTML and graphic design and one other course, um, I could make a design package. And we're going to call that a bundle, and we're going to give them a $10 discount on each of the courses if they buy all three at the same time. So again, the idea about bundles, you can add as many different uh, bundles or package type twos or package type ones uh, as you might want. All right, let's go on. I got one more and then we'll get back to that proxy. BOGO. Now, BOGO is a, uh, it's an add-on. It's not an add-on. BOGO is a feature that actually comes with packaging. So of course, packaging, you get actually two, <laughs> We give you two deals at one. Uh, you get course packaging with the package one, package two, and BOGO. And if you order now, you'll get two for the, no. Uh, it's like a, a pop pop peel pocket fisherman. So uh, the idea is that what you can do is identify a group of courses, make a course grouping, and then you set up rules in your preferences. You say, if you take X number of courses or you can get a discount on the next course. Uh, so again, uh, that is the model behind BOGO. It doesn't have to be buy one, get one free. It could be buy whatever to get the third one half off. So you, you'll say, hey, this is a special offering group where if you enroll in one course, you get the second one free. On our ACE Web demo, uh, we, we offer you a, a really good deal. Buy one, get one. So uh, when you enroll in the course, it gives you all kind of prompts uh, as the student is going through the process. Uh, and then it says, enroll in next course, and you get the next one free. And you say, you have one special offer course. Adding this course qualifies you for the discount. So it kind of prompts them to keep on, keep on signing up for classes. And then when they go to checkout, um, it's not like they can say, well, if I buy one at full price and I get the other one at a discount, what I'm going to do is, is delete the full price one. And I'm going to keep the one that's at a discount. Uh, no, the option on deleting in the right before checkout is that they have to delete the whole package so they can't cheat uh, on the system. Um, so what are some of the options here? Can I change your rules? Yes. And again, as I mentioned, you get to define how many classes they have to take and how much the next one is on discount. So it could be buy three, get the next one a third off, buy four, get the next one a fourth off, uh, buy five, and you get the next one free. You, you set that however you want. You can do BOGO, buy one, get one free. Can you do multiple BOGO groups at the same time? That's, that's a sorry no, because the BOGO group, there's only one set of tools to manage this, uh, you know, tracking how many courses are as part of a set um, uh, at any one time. But you can use different BOGO groups in different terms. So each term, you can create a different group for BOGO. And then finally, do I need to have all child courses in the schedule? Can I have some future unbooked class available? Uh, no, the class has to be available for enrollment when you add it as part of a package or as part of a, a BOGO. And that really applies to both BOGO and for um, the course packaging. So, all right, Sharon, you had a question. We've blowed through, don't know if there were any recommendations for other tips, but what was the proxy question? The proxy question was, if, if someone's enrolling somebody else, the proxy reg, is there a way to ask for another piece of data, you know, to kind of match those up to find those participants? And um, the answer is no. You know, you search by email, you know, like, can I type in your email and your license number to match oh, you up? And, and no. So, no, just the email. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you know, you would have you the person the proxy or you you're the proxy or you would need to know 
who the person is that would have that criteria. So, but yeah, there isn't a way, uh, we don't allow a uh, non-staff person to just fish in the database. If So that would be, uh, to me, that would be raising all kinds of funky uh, permission questions. So yeah, pretty much you're limited to, uh, number one is the, uh, um, email or, you know, I guess the, the other thing now that we're thinking about this is that again, if, if you've got people, uh, if, if, well, I'm, again, I'm not sure the context here, but if, if there are people whom, uh, who are connected to the person you're looking for, um, you could add those names. If it's a dentist, and they have a dental assistant, you could add the dental assistant to the dentist's name so that uh, you know when they go to Proxy Reg, they'll see that name listed in the uh, name grouping or the associates, if you would, uh, and they wouldn't have to look up an email, they'd, they'd see the name sitting there. So right. again, be happy to, to kind of troubleshoot that with uh, the client, you know, um, uh, off, uh, you know, off uh, on a sidebar discussion. So, yeah. all right, 10 minutes, guys, any other marketing ideas, any, any boosters that you're using that you would want to uh, highlight or, or, or talk about? Nothing. Nope. There, there, he, suffering from heat exhaustion or <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> we'll spare you the we'll spare you the uh, uh the the booster shot again. So um well we don't have I don't have a slide uh Sharon but you might want to mention when the next webinar is and the topic on it here. I think you can right, do right. that at least audio. We we can. It is in August on the seventeenth at noon central. We will have another coffee and conversation, but the audience of this, we're going to kind of reach out to deans and directors. And so uh, send me your dean director's email if you think I don't might not have it. But yes, or let us know what you would like us to cover with your dean and directors. That would be great, too. But that's on the 17th of August at noon central time. That's what's coming up. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you all for coming again. Uh, stay cool. Uh, we will uh, uh, look forward to having a, a good summer and see you here end of August and school have already started. Right, oh, right. I hope oh, you guys are getting some uh, vacation time in. So, All right. Let's let them finish their day. Have a great upcoming weekend and we will talk to you soon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.